Welcome to Graceling, written by Kristen Cashore, and it is a really good novel, I thought. Um, I it, liked it. It was very Tamora Pierce-ish. Um, what does Tamora Pierce Tamora say? Pierce has a quote on the back, and she says, Here's a wow of a book, seeing half-wild cats learn humanity as she battles soldiers, storms, and her own obsessive nature. I had to know how it ended. So, yeah. No, no, there was one more. There was oh, one. right. My favorite on the back. Okay, um, so this is at the very top of the back of the book, and it says, Graceling offers a fresh view of the process of learning self-mastery and has knee-weakening romance that easily rivals that of Twilight. I thought it was better than Twilight. Number one. That was not knee-weakening romance. Number two. <laughs> Twilight was not knee-weakening <laughs> romance. <laughs> Twilight. Uh, Start sends the bar a little low. <laughs> Granted, you didn't see that before you read the book, so yeah, true. Um, so basically, in this book, we have this girl. Her name is Katza. I keep calling her Casta. I don't know why. And she is graced <laughs> with the art of killing, but that's not true. She's actually can survive. It's very confusing. It's not confusing. Well, it's just. She does it twice, though. She pulls the switch twice because she's like, oh, it's killing, ha ha ha, no, it's survival, and then it's with Poe. No, oh, it's... She, she does two different switches, but she doesn't switch cats as gracing twice. It's not confusing. Mean, after Poe's grace switched, I'm like, I don't trust you anymore. <laughs> it's just like, something's up with that. You just, you can last with without food for just a little bit too long. <laughs> and sleep. <laughs> You're just a little weird. And ride that horse, like, till the horse is ready to keel over. Just... Yeah. So it kind of, she gives you hints. Yeah. But anyways. So Katza is graced with survival. But she thinks she's graced with killing. And because she accidentally killed her creepy uncle at the dinner table one day because he was being very, very creepy. Um, she thinks that she's a monster, and she's kind of been told that she's a monster by the king who's making her be a monster. His monster. Yeah. And so that is kind of like her weakness, that's her problem. Um, because there's nothing that she cannot beat. And this whole, this like dribbles down into her entire life, just her entire outlook is that she is a monster. She's a monster. She doesn't have any friends. And you're just kind of like, oh, you have like... Found one, found two, found three, oh, oh four, four, four and friends. So she's convinced she's a monster and she hates the way the kings are. And so she's running this whole secret society thing that helps the peasants and helps everyone because the kings are horrible people. And I was, when I was reading it, I was just kind of like, I think about at this point, you should start to realize how much good you're doing in this world. Yeah. You, you can't, like, everybody who's been affected by the council knows you for what you've done. And your reach is fairly far out at this point. Yeah, but I mean, it's kind of like you can't see yourself the way other people see you, right? True. But it gets a my problem was it just got a little bit repetitive. Yeah, it did get a little bit, but then Poe walks in and he's like, you're wrong. And she's that like, argument with Poe. Like, the whole friendship argument thing. So Poe claims he's a graced fighter, but in truth he's been living a lie his entire life because he can mind read. And mind readers' lives kind of suck because they're Nobody very, trusts very useful. Them. Nobody yeah. trusts them. Kings can just... Kings just use them, like abuse them with power because of their power. And so his mother tells him, you're not going to tell anyone what your power is. And because he can read people's minds specifically, what they're thinking about him, he's able to predict fighting. So he's a very good fighter. He, like, if I was fighting this guy over here and I brought my elbow back, he probably wouldn't see that coming and would get knocked out. But if I was punching him in the face, he'd see that and be able to dodge it kind of thing. So basically, Poe is great guy, sad, depressing ability that he has to keep a secret. Katza figures it out. And then there is this just my least favorite part of the book <laughs> yeah, okay. is this conversation that they have where she's like, I don't like you anymore. You're a liar. You lied to me. I thought we were friends. This hurts my heart. I can't believe... And he's just like, look, 
I'm sorry. And she's like, I have to tell everyone. And he's like, look, did I do anything to hurt you? No, I don't hurt people. You're going to ruin my life. And my family's and life. And my family's life. And everyone who's ever been important to me. And my mother. My father doesn't even know this. Mm -hmm. And she's just like, everyone needs to know. And you're just like, no. Well, he talks her out of it. Anyways. He does talk her out of it, but it's the most, like, annoying ten pages because it just goes on. Ooh, ten pages. <laughs> She's whining for nothing. Uh, <laughs> that... but, but anyways. <laughs> so anyways, they go off on their little adventure. And um, the nice thing about this book is the fact that Katza, she's really strong. So, I mean... It could have easily been that she just has to fight a whole bunch of guys, but she can already beat everyone. But the author doesn't do that. Instead, what she does is she sets up a whole bunch of obstacles that Katza really can't beat or has a very difficult time beating. And that you would have a hard time predicting in the fact that strength versus nature. Yeah, like she climbs a mountain that's like supposed to be impassable in the winter and is like impossible, but she manages to do it and bring another person along with her. I personally like it when she fights the mountain lion. I don't know if that's <laughs> leftover from burning, yeah. but whenever I see a mountain lion I get like super excited. And she's smart in the fact that she's like going for supplies on this mountain and it's cold and she's worried about Bitter Blue, the girl who's with her because she doesn't have winter things mm -hmm. and she's going and she sees like the flick of the tail and then all of a sudden you're in this insta battle with this mountain lion <laughs> and she's like killing this mountain lion and she looks down at it and she's like oh look a coat <laughs> and then you just have this image of her like dragging this mountain lion back to bitter blue who's just like, like wear it <laughs> <laughs> i read this for you Please wear it. <laughs> and then this little girl with just this lion draped over her. <laughs> She's and like, who's just <laughs> looking at this girl who's just like, dr like cats is dripping with blood. Because she's got injured. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you should have seen the other guy. Look, it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> that I think probably just sums up her personality. She's very to the point. To the point. I know my strength. I know how to use it. Cool. Don't give me anything I don't know how to handle. That's why Poe is so great. Because Poe kind of comes in and fills the other side where she's the brawn and like the survival. He's kind of the thinker who, when they're traveling together and they're in this tavern and there's this group of guys who are harassing this girl and she's just like, I'm just gonna get up, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna like, Pah! and he's like, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and he gives her all these reasons. Like, like we're in hiding. Let's not draw attention to ourselves. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyways, they're a great couple. They work well together. They're kind of like a foil for each other. And you know what? It's a good romance. They're not constantly describing his abs or his <laughs> cheekbones or I don't know. You're not getting pages and pages of crap about what he looks like or what she looks like. And it's not like she's pining over him. She never pines. She, like, he's there. She likes him. Stuff happens. She still likes him. She has to leave him behind at one point, and she's, like, upset about it, but she's like, I still have to do stuff. Yeah. Like, she's not totally destroyed. And then at the end of the novel, they're both talking, like, oh, I'm gonna go do this, and I'm gonna go do this, and they're not gonna be together, but they're still Like, in love with each other, but they're gonna do their own thing. They have their own autonomy. They're not... Yeah. A thing. The thing I really appreciated most about what she did, what the author did, was that no matter what, Katza was always still Katza. She didn't change herself for a man. She wasn't like, I love you, I think we're just gonna get married and have kids, because that's not who she is. She I was so worried because through the, like, the first third of the novel, She's like, I'm never going to get married. I'm never going to have kids. I'm never going to get married. I'm never going to have kids. This guy proposes to her. I'm never going to get married. I'm never going to have kids. Poe walks in and I'm like, this is where it gets <laughs> worrisome because are you actually, are you going to stay with this or is he going to fix you? Is he going to change mm -hmm. you for the better? And then she's, she's like, when they're about to get into a relationship, she's like, you know, I never want to get married and I never want to have kids. She thinks about it. Like, you can, yeah. she thinks about it, but she's like, nope, that's not how it's going down, and you have to be okay with that. And he 
is. And that is amazing. He's just like, I know I can't tame you. You're crazy. <laughs> or less cheesy. <laughs> So that was one of the beautiful things about this book. Um, Lek as a villain, great villain. Um, you get to find out more about him in the next two books, and they're both excellent. Um, Lek is kind of like the nice guy. All of these kings suck. Like everyone is manipulative. Like some of them are better than others. Like Poe's dad seems fairly decent, but they're pretty much out for themselves. And then you have the this Lek dude who's like far off kingdom. And Everybody is like, Lek is great, he's awesome, such a nice guy. He has those orphanages where he takes care of those kittens with all their scratches. He's, and he's just great. Nice guy, like, loves animals, loves children. If you say, do you know Lek? Hey, I do, I heard he took care of that puppy yesterday. Everybody loves him, he's awesome. And these rumors just trickle over this mountain, which is really suspicious, and everybody kind of tells the same story about him. And Poe is kind of like, look, well, Poe's looking for his grandfather. Or, well, they find his grand. They're looking for why his grandfather has been kidnapped. And he's gone to all these other kingdoms. And every time someone mentions Lek, it's kind of a little meh, and he's like, I've been everywhere else, I should go see him. And she's like, why would you go do that? Like, so awesome. Kittens, puppies, orphans. And he's <laughs> like, but every time we speak to someone about Lek, I can tell they're kind of lying, even though they believe their own lie. This is really suspicious. We need to go over there. And she's like, okay, whatever. Let's go. Let's go see Lek. Trumping through the woods, trumping through the woods, trumping over the mountain. When they get down the mountain, all of a sudden they see... <sighs> Poe is related to Lex Queen. I think she's his aunt. Yeah, something like that. And she is like running like crazy and there are these guys on horses chasing her and there's Lex at the front and he's just like, shoot her down! And you're and just like... And somebody goes... And everyone's just like, what the... And he's like, oh my god, what a horrible accident! And everybody believes Lex. And Poe is just kind of left there being like, well, I guess I was right. Shoot him down! And she's like, but she said... Katza is standing there listening to this line. He's like, no, that was an accident. Why would I shoot the king? That would probably be the most frustrating moment of your life. <laughs> to be the only one in that room. I'm just like... And so Poe is thinking, oh, we have to get out of here. So he's trying to drag her away because they, if Lek were to get her... Oh my god, he'd have, like, that the would time be of his life. Infinite! Because it would be worse than the fact that she would believe in what she was doing. And, and she's like unstoppable. Fun times. And so they're running away and she's just like, what's going on? And like she get he gets her out and he like starts to talk her down and she realizes how she screwed up. And he's like, but my my aunt fought at me that Bitter Blue his is around. Da their daughter, Queen King Lex's daughter, is around hiding. Because they've been escaping because King Lex is and nuts. He's it's like, kind of like uh It's not so much talked about in this one. It's kind of like implied that he wants to molest his daughter. Yeah. It's kind it, of it implied. It kind of sounds like molest, but he probably just wants to cut her up and Yeah, because where do all these kittens with scratches and sickness come from? Like it's definitely him. Totally. Okay. And it's just ugh. But Katza is like a very, she's very straightforward. All of the characters in this book are characters. Like they're not, they're fully formed, they're three dimensional. They never break out of, like they never do anything out of character. Um, yeah, so that's really that's good. That's probably one of the stronger points of the novel. The best scene to describe Katza is the scene where she's up in the mountains and she's got Bitter Blue with her, just Bitter Blue, Poe is, Poe is away. And um, she's up in the mountains, and all of a sudden, what happens? She's attacked by a mountain lion. <laughs> and now mountain lions hold a very special place in our hearts. And I think this is left over from Burned. Because they get attacked by because that stupid mountain, mountain lion. lion. This and one makes like sense. All of that poetry about the mountain lion. But in this, they're up on the mountain, and they've spoken about things that could be up on the mountain. Wolves, mountain lions. And so she's tromping through, looking for supplies, and she sees the swish of a tail. And all of a sudden, insta fight. She is like, they're ripping at each other, <laughs> mountain lion. And Katza like beats it with her bare fists. And it's it, in front of her, and she's just kind of like, oh look, a coat. <laughs> Bitter 
Blue <laughs> left the castle without really any supplies, and so she, they're climbing this mountain. She's shivering. She's not. She's freezing. And so she has this coat now, this this lion, <laughs> and so she goes, she grabs it by the tail and starts dragging it back to camp, and Bitter Blue sees her walking towards her, covered in blood and scratches, and it's just like... Just like carrying this mountain lion, like, I got you a coat! <laughs> It's, it's the best part of the book, by far, because it's just so ridiculous and so wonderful and so in character. Oh, it is. It's, it's great. Um, so, the bottom line of Graceling. Um, well, I guess the ending kind of wraps up really quickly. Um, yeah, it's about when the you see the ant running away, that's when you start getting a little bit... Well, that's when the pacing picks up, but it's, I would say... It's just a little bit too... I'd say that part's fine. I would say that it starts to really kind of speed itself along at the at the point where she gets to the castle oh, and yeah. Lex there. That's when it starts to go what like fast Poe forward. Gives her his ring, which basically he's giving her his princehood. So she now has control of his castle. So it's basically get her to the castle and we'll keep her safe there. And so Ka they're like, okay, we're gonna get over the mountain, we're gonna get on this boat, boat, we're gonna go on the boat to the castle, and they get to the castle, and, and like, she's opening the door, and the servant, like, oh, come in, quick, 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 you're gonna let the cold in, and, and your she, family's here, and she's like, what? And, and so she walks in, her and Bitter Blue, and there's King Lack, like, hey, Ketza, glad like, you brought you know, me my daughter. You know what it's like, you know, okay, <laughs> you know in The Emperor's New Groove, at the, the, when they're trying to finally get to the palace at the very end and they show the map and they show Kronk and Yeah, yeah. and um, <laughs> yeah, and, and the Emperor and they're going like on the map going, and they're going out like and all then the around. two guys drop off the map and then they get to the very end they burst into the door and there they are and then it shows the map and it just shows like them just like popping up the side it's that exactly <laughs> That's it. That's very true. And so anyways, she just, Katza just has this moment of clarity. She kills Lack. Everybody's like, what the fuck just yeah, happened? Yeah, and you know how she kills him? She throws a dagger through his throat, through his <laughs> mouth, just like, throws it, shuts him up. And she's freaked out by that. She's just like, what did I do? I shut a guy up with a dagger <laughs> to the mouth. <laughs> and like, it's like, it's, it's another insta-kill, and the fact that all of a sudden Lek is like talking, and then he's not. <laughs> and you're just like, did that just happen? And everybody's I, just kind of like, did that just happen? I guess the book's over. <laughs> and, but then you have like another 30, 40 pages of her yeah. trying to find Poe, and it just, it, it did seem very quick. Yeah. That ending. But, you know what, it was still really good. It was unexpected. You were not expecting the degradative fruit approach. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, I, you know what, it, all in all, Graceling was an excellent book, you should definitely check it out. I wouldn't say it's excellent, but I well, would say it's good. Yeah, it's very good. It's a big change, which is... I can appreciate, for what, appreciate it for what it is, what it does differently, and I feel that now that she, the author, has had more, like, practice, she definitely, can. if I were to see another book by her, I would definitely pick it up. I'm definitely planning on reading the other two in the series. Yeah, they're, they're good. They give you more backstory. They Katza appears in the third one again. Um, you get more bitter blue when she's grown up, and you get to see all the crap that like. And that is what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> because I want to know. It just I don't like it when it's just kind of very vague on something, and you know that something's happening. Kind of like Project Kane. You know something's happening, but you don't actually see the thing that's happening. But luckily for us, it's not that important. <laughs> In this case, I can finally go and find out why Lek is a horrible human being. Yes. So anyways, we hope to see you next week when we do Coldest Girl in Cult Town. The best book ever. <laughs> okay. <laughs>